In this episode of the Egypt History and Culture podcast, we delve deep into the life of a formidable figure from ancient Egypt, the great female pharaoh, Queen Hatshepsut. Known for her skill at pharaonic politics, her bold leadership and her enduring legacy, despite systematic attempts to erase her name from history, Queen Hatshepsut's reign as one of the first, and rare, female pharaohs of ancient Egypt was marked by peace, prosperity, and pioneering architectural feats. Born to Pharaoh, Tutmos I and his great royal wife, Queen Amos, in about the year 1507 BC, Hatshepsut hailed from a strong lineage of senior royals of the 18th dynasty, the first dynasty of the New Kingdom period. Even her name, which means foremost of noble ladies, hinted at her already high status at birth and foreshadowed the even grander fate awaiting her later in life. Hatshepsut's father was a formidable warrior king and military strategist who expanded Egypt's boundaries and initiated significant architectural projects throughout Egypt. Her mother, as the great royal wife of the pharaoh, would have had a strong religious and political influence in her time, further solidified by her role as, quote, God's wife of Amun, a prestigious title held by the most powerful queen consorts of the day, and later by the reigning female pharaohs themselves. From an early age, the princess Hatshepsut was exposed to courtly politics and royal duties, which laid the foundation for her political skill, expectations and priorities. As a senior member of the royal household, she undoubtedly lived a life of great privilege and received a respectable education in her youth. She would have also been privy to the machinations of international diplomacy, and the intricacies of religious ceremonies, all under the tutelage of her father, Tutmos I. Hatshepsut was also raised in a world where political alliances were often sealed by marriage. As was customary in the royal families of ancient Egypt to maintain the purity of their bloodline, the young princess Hatshepsut, then aged about 14 or 15, was married to her half-brother of about the same age, the teenage prince Tutmos II, solidifying his tenuous claim to the throne of Egypt through Hatshepsut. You see, the young prince, Tutmos II, was the son of Tutmos I by one of his minor wives, while the princess Hatshepsut was of a much stronger and more senior royal lineage. Therefore, by marrying his more pure-blooded half-sister, the royal couple's claim to succeed their father was significantly bolstered. When their father did die soon thereafter, Hatshepsut became the queen and the great royal wife, while her husband ascended to the throne of Egypt as the pharaoh Tutmos II, the fourth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. This marriage between Queen Hatshepsut and her half-brother is known to have produced one daughter, a princess named Neferur. The queen clearly adored her only child, as she would later often include the young girl in her own monuments. However, Hatshepsut did not give birth to a son, while a minor wife, likely a concubine, did bear him a son. And, as the firstborn male offspring of the pharaoh, the young prince carried the name of his father and grandfather. However, his position as heir would not have been certain at all should the great royal wife bear the pharaoh a son who could claim a more pure-blooded lineage, and potentially the throne of Egypt. But this potential conflict was never to be, because Tutmos II died unexpectedly, leaving the three-year-old Tutmos III the responsibility of governing and leading the mighty Egyptian empire. This was obviously mission impossible for a three-year-old child, so as the great royal wife of the departed pharaoh, and with a wealth of political knowledge of her own, Hatshepsut and the powers that be within the royal court decided that she should act as regent for the young Tutmos III until he became of age. However, this too would not come to pass, or at least it would not come to pass as originally expected. Initially, the Dowager Queen dutifully ruled Egypt as regent for her young stepson, but by the seventh year of her regency, she took the bold and very risky step of declaring herself pharaoh. 
In order to help solidify this almost heretical seizure of the throne for herself, Hatshepsut had herself depicted donning the traditional false beard and male attire that characterized statuary of pharaohs in ancient Egypt. This wasn't just a political maneuver. It was a masterful redefinition of royal gender roles, meaning that the dowager queen, along with the nobles and high priests who were in her camp, must have gravely feared a loss of power, wealth, position, and potentially of their lives had Tutmos III been allowed to assume the full reins of power on his own. Some scholars have also suggested that Hatshepsut believed that she had been imbued with a divine right to rule Egypt on her own, that she made claims that her father had appointed her as his successor, and that she was acting on the orders of the god Amun by sweeping her stepson aside. Others hypothesize this was a simply strategic move to maintain stability in Egypt, and that the nobles and priests concurred that she was the one who was best suited to continue leading Egypt towards prosperity. But what about the young Tutmos III? Did he simply allow himself to be pushed aside and have his right to rule be trampled upon? And did he not have a camp of his own, already plotting to outmaneuver or overthrow his usurping stepmother? Well, if he did, they did not constitute a very strong faction, since there's no evidence of any significant power struggle between the rightful pharaoh and the stepmother who bucked tradition and replaced him as pharaoh. Some theories even suggest that they may have essentially co-ruled amicably. If this were true, however, it would likely have been in name only, since virtually all of the massive building projects from that period that survived clearly depict Hatshepsut as the only pharaoh in town. Whether peace and prosperity were the original intention or the unintended outcome of supporting her solo claim to the throne of Egypt, there is no doubt that Hatshepsut's reign was indeed remarkably peaceful and prosperous. While dressing as a man and having herself depicted as such in statuary and on temple walls was one thing, Leading armies into battle would perhaps have been a step too far, and Hatshepsut herself may have known and calculated this into her careful equations. But instead of bringing back foreign riches to Egypt through conquest, Hatshepsut did the same through diplomacy and trade, forging new corridors for the selling of Egypt's goods and the acquisition of exotic spices, fragrances, flora, fauna, and precious metals. As trade flourished and Hatshepsut's peace dividend filled the state's coffers with wealth, Hatshepsut ordered the construction of buildings and temples throughout her domain with her name and likeness embedded within them. Her magnum opus was the massive memorial temple to herself that she commissioned on modern-day Luxor's western bank near the Valley of the Kings. The temple itself originally contained over a hundred sphinxes carrying her face, while other statues throughout the complex featured her kneeling with various offerings to the gods, walking into the afterlife, and simultaneously supporting the temple as columns and guarding it across the expanse of its facade. Inside of this magnificent memorial hall, detailed reliefs cover the walls with stone-carved testimony to her accomplishments on behalf of Egypt, especially the trade delegations she sent deep into the Horn of Africa and the riches that flowed into Egypt as a result of her campaigns. Beyond her own mortuary temple, Hatshepsut also expanded upon the great temple of Karnak, including creating a new giant obelisk that extolled her name and greatness and having it erected in a prominent place at the centre of the Karnak temple complex. She also may have had a hand in constructing and laying some of the sphinxes that line the great avenue of the sphinxes that stretched between Karnak and Luxor temple. Having succeeded beyond anyone's wildest expectations in consolidating power, positioning Egypt to thrive without the risks of war, expanding her footprint on the empire domestically, and remaining largely unchallenged in her reign, the mighty queen and pharaoh Hatshepsut died in about 1458 BC, and with no other heirs of her own, since her daughter is thought to have passed away during the course of her reign, Hatshepsut's stepson, Tutmos III, finally ascended to the throne and took his rightful position as pharaoh and the sole ruler of Egypt. 
While the assumed animosity between these two great figures was never evidenced either during Hatshepsut's reign or during the early years of her stepson's sole rule, later in his life we begin to see a systematic destruction of Hatshepsut's temples, cartouches and statuary throughout Egypt. Whether this was a delayed onset act of retribution by Tutmos III for having his throne kept from him for so long, even after he came of age, or an attempt by the establishment and the priesthood to destroy evidence that contradicted a strict male-dominated and male-led society, or perhaps both, we cannot know. But what we do know is that they almost succeeded in wiping the story and legacy of Hatshepsut from the historical record. Her face may have been smashed on statues all over Egypt and her name chiselled out of the cartouches that adorn temple walls. But luckily for Hatshepsut, and for us, this literal attempt to erase history was not as thorough as the perpetrators had hoped it would be. Over the thousands of years that followed, many more stones from her temples tumbled to the ground, and the halls and walls of her grand defaced memorial were buried by the shifting sands and debris of the Western Bank's craggy landscape. Even the great obelisk that bore her name in Karnak Temple was bricked up to hide what could not be destroyed. But with the discovery and subsequent deciphering of the Rosetta Stone and the unlocking of the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic language, finally unleashing a flood of history from the tomb and temple walls all over Egypt, faint hints, then stronger clues, and later solid evidence of a once mighty female queen named Hatshepsut, who ruled Egypt as a pharaoh in her own right, began to emerge. Now, with the meticulous partial reconstruction of a large part of her grand mortuary temple on Luxor's western bank, and the discovery of numerous fragments of history that escaped the destructive hands of her detractors after her death, the woman who did the impossible upended thousands of years of tradition, eschewed conflict, embraced diplomacy and trade, and brought Egypt into an era of unprecedented prosperity. Finally, lives eternal. Queen Hatshepsut, Lady of the Two Lands, and Pharaoh of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs>